We had two broad goals. One was adopting and aligning use of data-based individualization across CDE. So we wanted that to be kind of our, our framework for problem solving. And then the other piece was offering support and training to the field on DBI. We wanted to share DBI as a way to sort of conceptualize RTI and make it tangible and doable. The modules were kind of our broad, quote unquote, universal practices that anyone could access and receive understanding or training on DBI. We have a large state and uh, not all of our educators out there have budgets to come travel to the front range for training. And so um, putting things online is something that CDE, I think in general, is really moving towards so that we can make things available to some of our more outlying districts. Each module kind of align easily with the steps of DBI. We know we needed an overview of this is what it is. And then we wanted to dig a little deeper into each step. So it made sense that each step of DBI became a module. As we were developing them, um, we, we had rough guidelines that we want these to be digestible, so about 10 minutes. And so as we were developing them, um, topics like the progress monitoring and taxonomy, we said those might need to be separate because they're a little heavier to fit within the scope of each step. We have our MTSS resources page, and so you can see our general tools that we've used. But I added a specific DBI section here, and then our modules are on a separate page. And so we have the, the graphic overview and then the various modules that we developed. So, and like I said, they all, you can see the time on there. Some are a little bit longer, some are shorter, but you can just start playing them um, right away. This is our MTSS Online Academy, and so you can join as a guest to where you can watch and, and there's no sort of documentation of what you're watching, but you can register. Then we can track that you've watched certain modules and completed them, and then you can get credits that way. You know, here's how you can earn your certificate for an hour, and then here's kind of, there's a quiz and a processing guide. Our intention is to develop all that for DBI, again, using what we've already created. We had spent six days, maybe six, seven days all together in the district piloting and training. And we said, this is way too much to try and scale up statewide, but what can we offer that's digestible and, and tangible? We kind of settled on a frame of the steps, and then it was a, a process of what, what is kind of the key essentials for each step or each module for our readers? What do we want them to take away? So there was a long piloting process that really informed the specific content. I would credit our success in finishing the, you know, the initial online modules quickly with having a lot of content going into it that we had developed during that pilot. We had a lot to work with, so we weren't creating it from scratch. And also we had all of that support from MCII. We used the modules that they had and used a lot of that content and adapted it. We used PowerPoint, so I think the technology facilitated it as well because we didn't have to learn any new software or anything like that. It was PowerPoint and you just hit record and away you go. I think we really anchored on what is the purpose of these. And so we kept it focused. It's easy to go, well, they need to know this and this and this. And suddenly it's an hour module. That's overwhelming to try and script and record. But since it was, hey, let's highlight these two things. You've got 10 to 12 slides to do it. It kept us focused and then able to kind of do it without getting lost in the work. Definitely reflecting on those lessons learned helped us go, okay, what do we, what really fits our context here in Colorado? The, the large geographical area and then a team of like four people at the state trying to scale up DBI made us get creative or made us think about how to be supportive for the state's needs. Being really planful and having storyboards, like storyboarding out your content. And I think that that is a very useful process to engage in before you start building your digital content because retrofitting things that you've forgotten to put in there or accessibility features or whatever, after the fact, it's so much more difficult and time consuming. Think about all those things before moving into actually building it, then that's, that can be very helpful. In my office, we have two e-learning specialists, which are invaluable. I'm constantly contacting them and asking them questions and getting help from them for building my courses. But not everybody's going to have that. So another thing that might be important to think about is your um, design element, because that is really what's going to define whether your modules look professional or not. And so it's really important to, before you start to sit down and decide what's your color scheme going to be like, what are the exact fonts you're going to use? What are the font sizes you're going to use? How many words do 
do you want on the page? You know, and what kind of images and how do you find images that are um, creative common images that you can use? So all of those simple little design elements, if you don't have design people on your team, those are things that you have to take on yourself. I'd reiterate your point of storyboarding and really spending time planning out the content and spending the most time there because as a result of the time we invested in planning, the recording was actually fairly quick. We, we kind of had this frame of we have nanoseconds of people's time before they move on to something else, right? You know, on a computer, you're competing with literally anything that they want to look at. So we, we kept them fairly short. We, we definitely addressed the design elements that Veronica talked about. And we just tried to keep it simple and doable. Like what are, you know, the two or three things that, that are important for this step? 